guys guys where I'm at. We just really wanted to highlight you and what you do and everyone's always asking who you are and who does your work and where can I find him? So he's elusive. Mike Swan, resurrected, he's killer. And if you he want him, if people that are killer too. Yeah, yeah, I got a killer staff. You know, I wouldn't be successful without the team I have behind me. So, and it's cool because it's been long term employees that have been with me, you know. I was a construction worker for 11 years first. I did framing for a living. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what I'm doing. That's my life. Uh, and then about 06, 07, the economy took a crash. And basically, I was forced into doing something else because our wages dropped. And I'm like, I'm not breaking my back for the wages you guys are trying to give me. So, Cody McKinney. Weird. I used to work with him. Yeah, I remember you telling me In that. construction. And him and his mom started K-Town Tats in CUNA. Yeah. And I was like, Cody, show me some stuff. I want to I wanna tattoo. I, here's my portfolio. I can draw. I just want to learn a tattoo. So he's like, yeah, come on in. And I went in there for you know a few months, um, kind of learned some things. And then I uh, got hired on at another tattoo shop and kind of started my career there back in like 2010, I believe. And uh, it took off from there, and I've been doing it ever since. So I always say, it's a funny joke, I always say the economy pushed me into tattooing. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've been an artist my whole life. I just never thought I was going to do anything with that art, you know? Yeah. I was like, eh, I can draw, now what? The most thing that influences me is, like, 80s pop culture and horror movies and shit like that. That's why I'm all around me. Yeah. That's what inspires me. That's why I have it all in this room. I was a kid. I wasn't that kid growing up watching cartoons or Disney or anything like that. I was watching 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And casual. Yeah, just casual Monday afternoon. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was always fascinated by the macabre and the the oddities and the, the creepy stuff, you know. So I wanted my tattoo shop to be like that, a place to where people can come in and see one-of-a-kind things and go, whoa, whoa where'd, you, where'd you get that? Or, yeah. What, is, what the hell is that? Why would you own that, you know? Why not? Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted. I didn't want your typical tattoo shop where you walk in and it's flash on the walls or you just know you're in a tattoo shop. I wanted that art gallery yeah. feel. Something different. So Mike is covered from almost head to toe. Just about. Almost there. But what one is your favorite? My favorite is down here on my ankle. It's the one that my son tattooed on me when he was seven. It's a little skull with wings on it. That's definitely my favorite one. He was seven years old and he wanted to tattoo me. And I set up the machine and put his gloves on and his fingers went to here and the rest were like all floppy. <laughs> it was funny. And I set up the machine for him and had him do it. Um, now he's 16 and he wants to apprentice. I wish I had more patience, you know? And in today's world, everyone, everything's at the tip of your fingers, so they want instant gratification. And they come in and they're like, well, I want a full sleeve today. <laughs> um, okay, well, we're gonna have to make an appointment and you know, it takes time to come up with the design and draw it and everything. And I just, uh, you know, everyone wants that. They want it now kind of thing. So uh, I think that's kind of the hardest. Plus everyone comes with you, comes at you with 50 different ideas, you know, I want this and this and this and this and a tattoo this big. And you're like, uh, <laughs> it's not really gonna work. That's not how things work. And you know, and some people understand and some people get it and then some people just don't understand. A lot of people getting their first tattoos, they don't know what to expect. So I'm, I'm happy to walk them through it and, and let them know like, what's it gonna feel like, what's it not. I can't tell them personally because I can only tell them what it felt like for me. Yeah. Um, everyone's different. Everyone has to go through their own journey. And that's what I love about tattoos is you go through your own personal journey. No one else can do that with you. Yeah. You know, your own pain, your own. A lot of people come for the pain. A lot of people come for the art. A lot of people come to get past loved ones. 
memorial pieces, whatever it is. Um, and that's what I love about tattooing so much is that it's so personal. You know, we're we're changing lives sometimes and we don't realize it. Yeah. Um, and that's the rewarding part about what we do for a living is, you know, especially with cover-ups. That's why the whole shop is called Resurrected Tattoo is because we try to, you know, in Idaho, you don't have to be regulated or licensed to tattoo. Um, so you get a lot of people out of the house doing house tattoos that don't yeah. know a lot. So to me, I see it as job security and uh, <laughs> I, I specialize in cover-ups. Yeah. That's, that's what I do mostly. So, um, you know, and like I said, you don't really realize that you're changing people's lives until they look in the mirror and they break down and they start crying. Yeah. And you're like... Is that good or bad? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, you have no idea what this means to me. I can wear a bikini again or I can show this out in public again and I feel confident again or whatever, you know? And yeah. Always the number one thing that stands out in my mind is I remember this this lady came to me. It was years ago, um, this African-American lady. She went through a weight loss surgery, so her skin was very loose and mm -hmm. she had really, really deep stretch marks and she wanted me to cover it. And it was around her waist. And it was two different sessions. We did some roses, some flowers, some filigree, some really cool, pretty stuff. And when she was done, she looked in the mirror, she just broke down and started crying. And she's like, you have no idea what this means to me and, and uh, what I can do and how confident I am now. So it's, it's, it's stuff like that. It changes you. Yeah, you're like, oh shit, I'm doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool, it's fun, it's rewarding. So then what's the strangest tattoo you've ever done? <laughs> so that's the number one question I always get asked. Yeah. Not does it hurt or this or that. It's always what's the, the strangest yeah, tattoo? Shit. What's the grossest tattoo? What's the craziest place? And it, it, it's the same answer every single time. And it's something that I did the first two years of my career. Um, oh God, so gross. Uh, it was a, on a, I don't remember her name, it was a 65 year old woman. Mm -hmm. She was coming in to get her very first tattoo. She wanted a butterfly where her big toenail was supposed to be. So it was on her toenail bed. And it was a very rough and hard surface. Yeah. So as soon as that needle touched the skin, you heard, Nurr. it sounded like a Dremel. Nurr. And my buddy's like, what are you guys doing over there? I'm like, oh, just tattooing this lady's toenail bed, no big deal. And, she just sat there smiling. She didn't feel a thing. She loved it. I finished the, the butterfly and she went on her merry way. But to me, it was, it was a very difficult spot and I'm not a very big feet person. Mm -hmm. So was, my best advice is do your research. Yeah. Go to the shops, uh, check out portfolios, talk to the artists, check out the shop, see if it's clean. Um, do your research. Don't just go into the first person you can get into because they're open. Nine times out of ten, that's not a good sign. I'm not saying that they're horrible artists. I'm just saying sometimes if you have to wait for an artist, it's probably for a reason. So do your research, visit shops, visit artists, talk to them, and be educated. If it's your first tattoo, yeah. no hands, no necks, nowhere is super exposed, nowhere like that. I've turned down 40-year-old people before who wanted a hand tattoo, mm -hmm. and they're like, why? I'm 40. And I'm like, yeah, but you have no visible tattoos. I'm not starting with your hand. Uh, those are game changers, those are life changers, those are job stoppers. Yep. If you have visible tattoos, then we can talk. But if you don't, we're not starting there. No, it not, doesn't, not us. It doesn't make any sense. Some people will do it because they just want money. Us, we have morals, we have ethics, we're not doing that stuff. We're not going to be the shop to ruin that for you. Yeah. Nope. Sorry. Nine times out of ten, the pain. They, they, they hype themselves up. And, you know, their friends hype themselves up. Oh, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Oh, you're going to be in so much pain. And, you know, and they hold their breath and they tense. And then you start and they're like, oh, oh okay. that's not that bad. <laughs> so that's kind of the, the fun part of tattooing. Uh, first time tat people getting tattooed is uh, watching that. Them going through the, oh, my God, it's going to hurt. So, oh, it's not so bad. Yeah, I would say that as, I mean, I have a lot of tattoos, and you get used to it. Like, the initial, when you start, it's First, never fun. Yeah, it like takes a few minutes. kind of adapts. Yep. And so, like, and there's spots that get more delicate, for sure, but 
know. Once that, really once that once that adrenaline and that those endorphins yeah. start kicking in, yeah. it really helps with the pain. Oh, that's yeah. your natural, your body's natural pain. I think that's the hardest part about when you get started, and then if you take breaks, yeah, coming back into it, that's the worst. You take a giant break in between your session, then you're like your body calms down, and then you just start all over again. Mm, best advice for someone who has a bad tattoo? Mm -hmm. Again, do your research and see who is good at cover-ups. See who can do what. Talk to the person, see if it's even doable. Um, it's very, very rare I can't handle a cover-up, and when I can't, I'll, I'll suggest you know going and doing a couple sessions of laser removal to lighten it up yeah that really helps us be able to get what you want um and i always tell people when you're trying to search for ideas on what to cover it up with mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be bigger and darker than what's there just something that's busy something that's got a lot of movement something that's a lot of stuff happening that can distract the eye from what was yeah. you know what i mean that's the key to a good cover up is is working with what you have and trying to basically distract your eye from what was there instead of completely just slapping something on and making it darker. Yeah. It's not usually how a cover up works. It's so weird to see what people make go viral and what doesn't these days. You could put your heart and soul and hours and hours into a design and do a tattoo and it's like one of your proudest tattoos and you're like sick I really did a good job on that and people are like eh not bad or you'll do like a Pinterest tattoo with the infinity sign in it and everyone's like oh man this guy he's amazing and you're like really all the time ask any of us yep it's the, the most simple basic tattoos that get all the the attention and then the, something that you try to do a lot of hours and take a lot of time people are like eh there's one down. Good job. <laughs>